Hello everybody and here is tutorial 4, the tutorial that I promised you with regard to recording directly into buffers for playback and sample player. So if we look at the sample player which is here in our patch, I'd like to remind you that the play functions here, level functions here, there's a buffer window that you can see here, whether in fact play is on and off can be controlled from there. You can scrub and select in here and we've looked at how to send messages to control those loop start and end points. I'd also like to remind you that there's the reverse function in here to play in reverse and a speed function in here as well. So there's a lot of variation that's possible here and pitch variation and a muting function here. Okay, now if we, uh, I'm going to turn down the gain for a second, if we turn the audio on, you can see various things are playing here. I'm going to deal first of all with this segment of the patch which relates to these buffers that are sitting over here and then I'm going to talk about this segment of the patch which is where the recording of various elements uh, can take place. Okay, so first of all, we know that we can send these messages, sample, buffer name, and then drums and drums two. You'll see these buffers over here. One's called drums, one's called drums two. So these buffers have been set at 2000 milliseconds in length and two channels for stereo, both of them. However, when you send a replace message with a file name into this buffer, it will adjust its length and remake itself to be the length of this loop. Okay, So if we load Vibes file into here and have a look in here, you can see this is relatively short. It's um, 1100, 1200 milliseconds. If we load the drums file into here now using the replace rather than open and look in here, you'll see that this is now three and a half thousand milliseconds long or so. So you can see that the buffer size has changed when we loaded the sample to the length of the sample and this requires you to use this replace word rather than open or read. Okay, so I'm using replace so that the buffer changes size to suit the file that I have here. I'm going to load this drums loop into this first buffer and this techno beat into drums too. If I now go back here and say, and send a message into my sample player saying read sample from buffer name drums, that's this one, it's going to be this drum loop. And we can see that load immediately into this file here. If we turn up the master volume, we'll hear that. Okay. Now, if I load techno beat into this buffer called buffer drums 2 and send the message into this sample player that says sample buffer name drums 2, you'll see this file immediately changes. to this techno beat. So we can quickly change backwards and forwards between these by sending these messages to load a different buffer into the sample player. Now I happen to set up a key input here and keys 1, 2, 3 and 4 are actually key numbers 49, 50, 51, 52 and I can use 1 and 2 therefore to swap back and forth between these two first sample buffers, and if you do that like this, you can see you can do it very quickly and already get some interesting cut-ups. Um, we could easily extend that and say let's add key number zero to turn on and off reverse. And then we would go here and look for the um, reverse message or we would make a message box here and place this into V. 
the right hand side of that, like so, and turn on and off reverse and see what the message is. So on is one, off is zero. Now I like to do this because now I can just copy that, in fact, copy the entire, oops, sorry, copy the, copy the entire message box by Apple D to duplicate, take it up here, make this into $1, replaceable argument. Now, I want to put a toggle box here because I want the uh, number 1 or 0 to go in here to replace this number. And I'm going to look up here and see, well, if I use key number 0, note number, um, sorry, the 0 on the keypad, what key number is that? And that seems to be 48. So I'm going to add in here the key number 48. Take that and hook that up to here. Now I'm just going to test that every time I hit the zero key, whether that turns it on, turns it off, on, off, etc. And input that directly into here. So we're now able to control the reverse and you can see this going on or off. So if we do that in addition to the two samples that we've already got playing, very quickly we get some interesting variations. So all we're doing there is using three keys on the keyboard to load different buffers into the sample player and to, to turn reverse on and off. We haven't started playing with pitch or speed at all. Okay, so this is a basically loading buffers that are preloaded here. We could have pre-recorded material in them. And we're showing you how simple it is to switch backwards and forwards between those. If we look at this section of the patch over here, I'm using another sample player to play into a record object. I'm just going to make that a color so that it's easier for you to see when you download this patch. So this record object, in fact, let's make the font a little larger here. So that we understand that this is a more important uh, object than you might otherwise think. Because this is actually the focus of this tutorial. Okay, so this record object has a name, class 01, and a number of channels, two channels. And you'll see here two buffers, one called class 01, one called class 02, both a thousand milliseconds long both two channels. So if we now tell this class 01 buffer that we're going to record into it, whatever signal is coming into inputs 1 and 2 here, which happens to be whatever's coming out of this uh, sample player, will get recorded into this buffer. So let's turn that on. You can see it records through uh, until that reaches 1, using select 1 to then turn off this toggle so that it only records for one second or, for, in fact, for the length of this recording. So now we have sound in buffer class 1. Let's double click and have a look at that. And there's some sound there. Now, I have a second buffer here, class 2, and if I tell this record object set class 2, it will set itself now to record into this other buffer, class 2. So I'm going to record into that buffer now. We see there's one second worth of recording. Open that and there's buffer 2. Open this one and there's buffer 1. Now obviously they look quite similar because they're drum patterns, but you can see that patterns are falling at quite different places in the buffers. Okay. Now, if we want then to use those recorded buffers in this sample playback, 
we can just use the same functions that we've been using here, but with the names of these buffers. Sample buffer name class 01, sample buffer name class 02. So let's set that to class 01. And that's class 01. I'm going to set this back to class 01 and re-record. Do it again. And you can hear that's changing because every time I record back into class 01 buffer, it replaces the contents of this buffer, which is what we're playing back. Let's try that again. And you can actually see this getting rewritten here when we do that. Okay. So if we now switch this to set class 2 and we record something else, let's load um, a different file in here to play back. And so now this is playing a different sound file which we can't hear, which is Julia Steinbock singing. And we've set this to record into the buffer named class 2, this buffer here. So let's record that. And now that is now stored in this buffer, there it is. But we're not hearing it because we're still listening to buffer 1. Or we could be listening to the other drums buffers. Okay, so if we now switch to buffer class name 2, we're going to get the new sound that we just recorded from here into buffer name class 2, which is Julius Steinberg singing. And there it is. So if we go back, if we leave that on class 2, but let's go back here and load uh, a different sample, maybe from drums 2 over here. And now record that, because this is playing from class 2, we're recording into buffer class 2, it's going to immediately rewrite this buffer with the new sample. And there it is. If we switch back to the techno beat and hit record again over here, it'll immediately re-record that buffer. Hit record again, you get another pattern in the buffer record again, etc. I've set up a key input here, select32, which is selecting the space bar as the trigger for this record function, to turn on the toggle box, and then I'm looking at the sync output, and when that gets to 1, select 1, causes 0 to be sent back and turn the toggle off, so it's automatically recording just for the length of the buffer, and turning off recording means I can very quickly record just by hitting the space bar and rewrite the buffer that we're listening to here. We can go back to class 1, and that sounds the same. Let's record something else in here again. Class 2, set to class 2 buffer. Got a new file, Julius Steinberg playing. We'll record that into class 2. There we go. It's played. Go back to reading class 2. And there we go. Now, on this uh, tutorial, I've set up buttons 1, 2, 3, 4 on the computer keyboard to switch these samples between the two buffers we've got here and the two buffers we've got here. And so just by pushing these buttons, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can switch between those very quickly. Zero, as we saw, is turning on and off reverse. I'll just turn up the master volume and um, we can try that again. So here we are. One, two, three, four, reverse. Buffer, the space bar, go back to 4, which is class 2 here, the button number 4. Three go back to class 1 buffer. 
Copper. Switch this up to so back to Techno B, re record that. Oh, sorry, to set that. Set part one. Here we are. So you can see in this setup that it's very quick to record into buffers. Whatever this input, I'm just using a sample player as an input, but you would probably have a live instrument as your input. And we will use this patch to explore the possibility of making multiple buffers here that you record into, and then having multiple playback sample players that allow you to synchronize those loops across uh, a number of samples. Okay, hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.